Hello guys, again, I'm sorry it took so long to make a new video. The last weeks have been crazy. It's been a weird transitional time and uh, last week I started working in my new job, which I don't like very much, <laughs> but the thing is that um, because I'm a foreigner, uh, when you come to United States to study, they allow you to stay an extra year if you get a job in something that is related uh, to what you study. So in my case now I got a job as um, assistant of an artist and um, it's fine, I mean it's full time so it's five days a week and the pay is okay but the thing is that of course it's hard because that means that I'm gonna spend less time in my studio with my work um, and uh, it's hard to know how to compensate these things but for now I need to try I need to see what happens and uh, the thing is that uh, the last two weeks I think before I started working I was trying to come to the studio and take advantage of the time and the space that I have and it was very hard because even though I was coming every day and trying to work, I felt very stuck in my own work. Um, once you finish grad school, you're used to like get a lot of input and learn a lot of new things and feeling that your work is going somewhere. And then after that, you're on your own. And uh, even though I think that's a good thing after all that information, sometimes it's easy to feel pretty lost so i was really like trying and trying to do stuff and nothing was really working so i started feeling overwhelmed and i got into that cycle of the creative process where you're just like hitting a wall and i wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because um a lot of things happened to me that I think, or I realized about some things that I think really helped me and um, maybe could be helpful for you if you do something related to like a creative field. So I was coming here every day, uh, I was feeling a little hopeless and that made me feel kind of sad. But um, I thought about something that I started doing at school. that for a while I thought it was kind of cheesy but I just gave it a try that it's um write some advice to yourself on the wall it could be any kind of advice uh, what I did in school especially was some um, technical advice it really helped me during the painting process to give myself focus in what was important things like uh, spend more time looking at your model than painting paint less and think more, or paint the transitions, don't be lazy, put more paint on your palette, stuff that's simple. Uh, but when you are in the process of painting, sometimes you forget uh, because you are frustrated or because you want to rush the process because you want to see the painting finished. And um, I started doing that again in this studio. Um, and it, doesn't necessarily need to be just technical advice sometimes it's more like about the attitude that you need to have towards your work and actually while I was trying to make a new piece I realized that I was stuck because I started this with an idea and throughout the process that idea was changing and I was just being stubborn about keeping my original idea in mind and sometimes the process at least for me, uh, it's more organic than that. And you need to allow yourself to change your mind. <laughs> Otherwise, it's like um, you're fighting with your painting, in my case, or whatever you're doing. And it shouldn't be a fight. It should be something that you, that it flows, that it feels easy. Otherwise, you don't enjoy it. So when I allowed myself to stop fighting that, the work started again to kind of flow. So 
I wrote that on the wall <laughs> and that way I can keep that in mind especially when I start feels frustrated again and I think it was funny that I was going through all these things uh, right in the moment that a week ago we went to Strand to see some books and I found this book that I wanted to share with you it's called Art and Fear um, it was written by two artists um, this book was written in the 90s but it basically talks about like universal stuff so it never got, gets old um, and the thing is that now I've been talking about some people about the book and they all told me like oh that's the book that every artist should read and by artist I don't mean just like visual artist like it could be any anybody uh, linked to the creative field and uh, I never knew about it before so I was very surprised but apparently it's pretty famous I think probably you can find it on Amazon I don't know if there's a version in Spanish I'm gonna try to research that and the thing is that um, it's a great book <laughs> a lot of times I feel like oh my god this thing is talking to me <laughs> maybe it's not for every kind of artist um, but I think it addresses a lot of very important issues that are related mainly to the process of making art. I think that's essential and, and it's something that ironically nowadays in art schools we don't talk a lot about. Um, I went to the university in Chile and I came to grad school here and I think that there was just like a few opportunities that my teachers or different artists talk to us about the process of making art and being an artist is all about that <laughs> I think that sometimes nowadays and they talk about that in the book we get confused about what's important uh, because we focus too much in the result in the actual piece um, but one piece is just one step in the process uh, being an artist to me means like a yeah, permanent exploration and they talk in this book about that and how to keep yourself exploring and not, how not to quit and what are the difficulties that we all share, um, the concerns that we all share. They talk about the idea of talent, the expectations, uh, the acceptance or recognition and how those things could be confusing and how it's important to separate all them to know what are actually obstacles what things you can embrace and what things are just part of the process those are things that sometimes are hard but are gonna keep you working so you need to accept them I would love to share with you like a lot of lines from this book because I think it's great um, the other good thing for me uh, because English is not my first language I get frustrated every time that I try to read books in English because it takes a lot of effort for me so I go very slow and in Spanish I consider myself a fast reader so sometimes I don't finish the books um, I quit very easily but this book it's very easy to read I mean if you don't have like a um, very like advanced level of English I think it doesn't matter you can still understand it uh, it flows very well it's um it's very like reader friendly in a way and it's really like helping me right now in this process uh, because my work is starting to flow again but at the same time I'm working for somebody else and I don't have much more time in my studio so this helped me to stay focused um, in a way it kind of talked to me not just about my process in my work but in my life those things are very connected so I don't know I just wanted to share with you about this book because I think it's great um, it, I really felt like it spoke to me um, it really made me feel comforted in a way and I think that's important uh, we dismiss that nowadays but it's important to feel like okay I'm not crazy I go through this and it's normal and maybe it's gonna be helpful for you so I really recommend it um, 
if it's hard for you to read in English, you can read it by parts. It's very like organized and it goes like from one um, subject to the other uh, in a very organized way. You can read two pages each day and you will make enough progress. So that's fine. So I hope you can find it. Uh, give me your opinions about it. I would love to discuss about it a little bit more. And I hope soon to be able to show you more about what I'm doing um, to go around the city. I, I want to take advantage that the weather is still good. So that's it. I thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for making me feel more encouraged to do this. And I hope to see you soon.